Hey guys, got a 01 Civic here for check engine light. I don't normally film these, but they seem to be more helpful as far as view count goes to people that are looking for things like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filming these when I can. Got a code P1259 for the VTEC system on bank one, which is the only bank we have since it's a four cylinder. I'm gonna hook the scan tool back in. I'll show you what it's showing me. All right, we're gonna link it up here. Make sure nothing's changed since I checked it last week before we dropped it off. Okay, we got one. One out of one here. It's the only one. 1259. We'll go through. Acura should be the same thing, but I'll go down through Honda. Or two Honda. And this is just a real basic scan tool here I use for quick stuff. We take system malfunction. Now my other scan tool I've got will read most every uh, module on the car which is what I think I checked it with the first time and it said B1 error or malfunction something like that but it was bank one which is the only bank we have so that's the only code in here so we're going to go through the uh, diagnostic on that I've already looked through the the uh, factory service and uh, I'll go through the checks that it says to do on that I only use those factory flow charts for uh really for uh ohm specs and switch states and things like that to check for they're they're really not that helpful but uh, when you need that kind of information you kind of have to go by that just to get it i think i'm gonna have to get the air box off let me find where this thing's located and i'll uh i'll show you where it is okay if you can see down in here that's that's the vtec solenoid with that blue wire well it's a blue jacket on a wire that's the actual oil control valve so our solenoid there and then there's a pressure switch mounted into the body of that, that spool valve as well so once the engine gets to a certain rpm i think it's 4000 on this car then that that solenoid there gets energized and then the pressure switch will actually open it's in a closed state normally so there should be continuity through the pressure switch now. And once the valve opens and oil pressure is applied to the uh, rocker assembly, that switch will open and the car will know that the car went into VTEC mode. So either, either the pressure switch is bad or the actual uh, solenoid valve is not operating. And that's really the only two ways a computer can actually set a code for this. And he said it had an oil leak and you can see right there it's nice and clean and wet and uh these are bad about leaking at the gasket where it bolts to the head so that's probably gonna take care of all of this let me get the air cleaner off if i have to i don't think i can do these checks with it in the way okay i'm down to the valve i just took this part of the air box off this piece here this mounts into the car uh, like this I started to take the entire assembly out, but that's uh, that 10 millimeter there and that one right there. And a couple other hoses and things may have had to come off, so I didn't have to take the whole thing out. So what we gotta get to right now is this connector right here for the pressure switch. And that connector right back there, you can see that right back in there. Uh, right there for the solenoid. I need to unplug that and make sure I have continuity through the solenoid. I think the spec was 13 to 40 ohms. And that's probably a, a tolerance for temperature. And the engine is fairly cool. I just pulled it inside. It shouldn't be very warm. But this right here is supposed to have, I believe, battery voltage on the pressure switch. And, and it, since it's closed, there should be 12 volts on either side relative to battery ground and then I sh should be able to check with this unplug check from the, the end of that connector uh, into this connector right here get some more light on that I can get to the end of that connector unplug it and then check from there through the coil of the, of the uh, solenoid I should get the 13 to 40 ohms so I'm gonna unplug both of these make sure we got those inspect if not we're going to replace it which i think i need to go ahead and replace it anyway for the oil leak uh, i wouldn't want to pull it off there and just replace the gasket 
This thing got 200,000 miles on it. Okay, normally an ohm check is not really the best way to test the circuit. It needs to be loaded, but if there's an open circuit through the coil, then that's a good test. I mean, it's got to have a complete circuit or it's never going to work. So I'm going to put this, uh, this end over here, one on battery ground, or I could use the cylinder head most likely, but I'm going to go to battery to see if I can get continuity that way. Actually, I need to get an alligator clip. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my negative lead. It doesn't really matter which lead for an ohm check, but I've got that on the negative post. I'm going to check here on the cable, make sure i got a good ground. i got 0.2 ohms. Which is essentially like if I shorted my two leads together, I'd get basically the same thing. So I've got a good connection through here. So I'm going to check continuity through. This is the terminal coming off or towards the uh, coil. So I've got 16 ohms through the coil. So from this connector back here, from the connector going straight to the VTEC solenoid. It's unplugged. You can see it's running down to the solenoid right there where my thumb is. That's 16 ohms, so that thing should be good. It may just be the pressure switch, and it may just be that it's got so much oil in it that it can't make contact. But I'm gonna go down there and check, check the oil switch, pressure switch. Okay, so I need to put my other test lead on now. So I've got both of the, both of the leads here. I'm going to go inside the connector uh, on the actual pressure switch. So I'm basically right down here. I'm going into the pressure switch to check continuity across those terminals. I should have a dead short with the VTEC system off, like right now. Let's see what we get. Okay, we've got a dead short, which is what I should have. So what I'm going to do is turn, turn the key on. Make sure I have 12 volts at the connector. Okay, I checked the connector with the key on that runs to the pressure switch. I do have 12 volts there at the switch, which I have a short through the switch, so I should have zero volts coming out across the terminals so right now it's kind of looking like it's a stuck valve because i've got a good connection or continuity through the coil pressure switch is closed so either the pressure switch is just physically stuck closed and can't open or the valve just not opening i'm going to take a jumper wire from the battery and go straight to the the uh the terminal going to the solenoid and see if I can hear it move. I should be able to hear something if the valve moves. So if it's physically stuck, then uh, applying 12 volts to it won't do anything, but I may be able to hear it move. Okay, I've set my meter to amps and I've got the, the uh, lead coming out as amps uh, coming off the positive terminal of the battery. And it's going through the meter and I've just got a, basically a positive jumper here going through my meter. I'm going to run that to the solenoid and see if I hear it move. All right, I do hear it move. I don't know if you can hear that or not. I'll try to get you down in here to it. You can hear it firing off. Something at least is moving. Okay, at this point, it's either an intermittent problem or the, pr the pressure switch, if, if the valve is actually moving, the pressure switch is physically stuck. The only way the computer can diagnose this issue is if the pressure switch doesn't change state and the, uh, the line going to the to solenoid is open. Right now it's not, so uh, I'm probably going to clear the code and go drive it, see if I can get it to come back on. It may even do it in park. At that point, We'll just have to replace the, the valve assembly for that oil leak anyway, so I think we're just going to have to replace it, looks like. I'm going to clear the code out and go drive it. 
Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention was, and I just checked it myself, is the uh, the oil cannot be low because if the oil is low, you'll never build up enough oil pressure at the top of the engine. So we've got, let me get it focused here. Not even on the stick. I think he's had this oil leak coming from this valve for so long, he just let the oil get low. So I'm going to have to fill it up with oil and then retry it, but I'm probably just going to go ahead and replace that valve. Um, I'd have to pull it off to change that gasket. I'll just have to see what he wants to do. I'm going to fill it up and then see if the code will come back. Okay, it was almost three quarts low, so that's probably the issue. Probably only holds four quarts total anyway. So, um, filled it up. I've only got mobile one. I hated to waste mobile one in this thing, but that's what I had in the right viscosity. What I could do is back probe this battery feed here and then go to uh, negative terminal of the battery here. And then if I have 12 volts across, across there and the switch opens up, then I'll get zero volts. It'll drop down to zero on the meter, but I can't get it into VTEC with it in park. So I'd have to drive it. And if I'm driving it, I can't really be checking this. So what I'm gonna do is just drive it and see if I can feel VTEC engage. And if I can, then I know it works. Everything here mechanically seems to be working. As long as the switch is good. I think it was just the oil level it was so low. He doesn't drive the car a lot. So I think it's just been leaking when he does drive it. And he probably hasn't had the oil changed in a while. So it's gotten so low. You can see it running down the engine here. But it's coming. You know, it's nice and wet at the valve and clean. That's where, you know, you got the detergents and all in the oil that clean all this as it comes out. And then it's just running down the, the valley here. Uh, all over the bell housing. Transmission coming all over that. And, and then running down the ground. So... That's most likely the source of the oil leak, and I would hate to put a gasket up between the solenoid assembly and the, and the head, and then it'd be leaking out of the actual solenoid or some other spot in there. So if we want to fix the leak, I'm going to put a new valve in it. I'm going to go drive it now, and let's see if VTEC will, will engage. Okay, I went and drove it. Light stayed off. I think the oil level was just the, the problem all along. Customers decided to wait on that for a little while since we can just keep oil in the car but his uh, front struts are completely blown, so we're gonna do that first. Uh, whenever I do this repair, I'll let you know.